Hello, my viewers, welcome back to the channel. My video title, what the video's about. And I just seen the Steelers has uploaded the top plays of the Patriots game. They can spell plays, right? That video probably 30 seconds, most likely. But we're going to do a full game analysis, um, quarter by quarter. I was taking notes throughout the game, and I'm not really mad. I didn't, I didn't set, I'm just disappointed. I didn't even set up my camera. I mean, not my camera, my um, microphone. I didn't set none, any of the stuff, you know, because I'm just disappointed because the team. Like, so in the first quarter, I, I already knew what type of game it was going to be. I knew it was going to be one of those games that I'm like, yep, going to be a slow pace. It's like one of those games of last year when we played the Packers or something like that where it was like, it just looked bad. It just looked like too slow pace. And can't blame it on O-line this time because O-line played well. And even though our skill positions, you know, like the running backs, like, you know, Najee, Warren, they played well. And, you know, the receivers, they played well when they got the opportunity. But the quarterback – Missed some, missed some throws out there. I think, and some of the play calling wasn't the best, but the play, the play calling was solid enough for us to go out there and win. Just some of the plays was executed like fully. So we're going to go through each quarter and break down, you know, quarter by quarter, the, the good and the bad. Starting with the first quarter. In the first quarter, I loved, I loved the only way we was using Najee Harris and was using Jalen Warren as a one-two punch combo. Have them in the mix. It's kind of like keeping Najee. Because Najee not 100%. I think he, he looked about like, I say about eighty-seven percent healthy. He had about um, I think almost he almost had a hundred yards of scrimmage, like hundred scrimmage yards, because he had like um, some in, some in the air, some on the ground, a little bit like that. But we really didn't run the ball like we should have ran it. But later in the game, we started picking up the run a little bit more. Jalen Warren was coming in. He was making some splash plays. Looked kind of like Connor, um, James Connor a little bit because the way he was so elusive and like the way he was moving, where he can get out the get out and like just explode and stuff. He was kind of like James Connor a little bit. And plus, he wore number thirty, like James Connor used to wear. But yeah, um, the play calling was um in the first quarter. It was it was it was, it was solid. It was all right. But Minka Fitzpatrick is still continuing his defensive player of the year campaign. Um, coming to, coming to the season, I had of course I was like T.J. Watt on that list. I had Minka on that list. I had Miles Garrett on that list, even though he's a Brown. I had um, what's the name? Uh, Michael Parsons on the list, and I had Khalil Mack. I was like Khalil Mack might. Real surge, you know, playing alongside Joey Bosa. And his first game, he had three sacks. So I had those guys on the list for defensive player of the year. Now, TJ Y is out for extended time. But Lincoln Fitzpatrick campaign continues, you know. 14 tackles last week. A couple tackles this week. He had um, an interception this week. And is still making plays like that. And the negatives in, the, in this game, though, I mean, in the first quarter, was um, we couldn't get pressure to the QB. I don't know if we sacked Mac Jones. I don't think we sacked Mac Jones this whole game. Yeah, we didn't sack Mac Jones at all. Um, we got pressure later in the game, but in the first quarter, we couldn't get any pressure. He was back there chilling. And that first drive, you seen it. You just seen how he was delivering, delivering. And that, you know, TJ Watt not there. Now, Malik Reed did do a good job getting there sometimes. And that was some, it was some holding penalties on him like that. But we just, we still got to make, we still make the plays. We can't make the play and gotta get a sack or anything like that. So it kind of gave, um, Mac Jones, like, a lot of time to be comfortable back there in the pocket. And, um, Mitch, bad decision making in the first quarter. He, um, made bad decisions. In the first quarter, like, I think, I think through interception in the first quarter, like that, the one he, like, stared down Deontay Johnson. And plus, Deontay Johnson wasn't even open on that play because number 30 of the Patriots was sitting right there in the zone, just looking at him. Like, he wasn't, like, this, it wasn't the sky's coverage or anything. He was just sitting right there in the zone, looking at him. It was a safety over the top. So, it was like, he was, like, kind of bracketed into it, and then he was kind of forced the ball. If you want to force that ball, you got to, like, maybe have to step up and, like, kind of, like, throw, like, a, almost like a drop box type of pass. He tried to bullet it in, it got tipped up and got picked off. Kind of bad decision, could have took the check down or just ran. Because he had opportunities to run throughout the game in the first quarter. But he, he didn't run until later on. Like, he had opportunities, a lot of opportunities, a lot of chances to run. And just get out there and be slide. Or he throw a check down to Najee. I thought he started throwing check downs later in the game. But he should have threw the check downs early on. But then later in the game, he started relying on check downs a little too much. And started taking what the defense was giving him. But, like, on third down, you can't really do that. Take what the defense gives you. You know, if you're third and ten, you know, don't take the five-yard um, pass. You know, yeah, get to the sticks. Move the sticks. And Mr. Biscuit did not do that. He was, in the first quarter, the offense looked a little too stale. Now, moving on to the second quarter. Second quarter, Trubisky got a little more comfortable. He started making some throws. The running game got going a little bit. And then I like to see, I like what I was seeing, too, from Chase Claypool getting the ball and getting targets and stuff like that. I wish Pickens would get more target, targets and stuff. But Pickens, he, he was beating his corner. And plus, like, even if he wasn't beating his corner, I was like, you know when you play when you play anything when you play basketball when you guys play basketball before when you play anything you like oh it's a mismatch it's a mismatch you got, you got a six three a six four like cornerback I mean like a receiver and you got you got um Jalen Mills on the one side of the field who's like five I think Jalen Mills like five eight like that throw the ball to him throw the ball up get the ball out to the outside Claypool had a mismatch because the 
Patriots cornerbacks are not these big juggernaut cornerbacks like these like tall guys. They're like kind of like these they're like five, eight, five, nine type of corners. I thought get the ball to the outside, throw to the throw throw their way and give your big receivers some chance. We have we have guys like Claypool, we have George Pickens, Miles Boykins, big receivers. And Pat Fryman, you can move him to the outside. Mr. Bisky was just focused. He had a tunnel vision for like like kind of last week for one receiver, the primary route. If it's not there, he just don't know what to do. He started tripping and then he had to run back, take a sack in the first when he could just um did the, did the first quarter or second quarter. It might have been the second quarter. Take a sack. He just threw the ball out of bounds. Or he could just ran up. He had an opportunity to run at first. He could have threw the, he could threw the ball out though. He's gonna keep trying to spin around, trying to keep it alive. You know, sometimes you got to hit, you got to hit the um hit the play, let the play die, let the play be a dead play for you to um kind of like move on to like the the next one, and still be in like comfortable position to get the first down. You can't like I think it was no, I think it was second down too. So it was like he got to, it was either the first down, second down. But I think it was second, it was second and seventeen or third and seventeen, one of them like that. He kind of like ran back and got sacked like that. You got to throw that ball out, or throw that ball away. But it was like, it's a lot of opportunities out there. For him to get the ball to Pickens, because Pickens was winning his matches outside. And if he didn't win it, like I said before, he's like 6'3", right? Just throw the ball to him. Trubisky, on, 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 I mean, on the negatives, Trubisky being hesitant, like I was talking about. The old line was consistent later in the game, but in the second quarter, it was not consistent. It was like not playing well. But then they start, but later that quarter, they started getting more in sync. That, and, of course, I just talked about Pickens not getting targets at all in the first well, he got, he got one at the end of the first quarter. I think he caught a 22-yarder. And then um, the Nelson Aguilar play was a bad play right there. Witherspoon has been pretty – no, he's pretty pretty good like from the, based off his last year production. And then so far this year, you know, he had an interception this year. He had scored on – but, you know, he playing against some he – he was playing against, you know, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is a very good receiver. But Nelson Aguilar is a guy who played for the Eagles. Remember, he couldn't catch. Remember the, the body catching and all the drops he had? You can't, you can't get out muscle like – He's up over you and take out your hands. You can't let that happen to you by Nelson Aguilar, by anybody, but especially not Nelson Aguilar. And he's beat you on that play like that. At least get him out of bounds or something like that. Right there, should, that play right there should never happen. It kind of remind me of last year when I believe was that week two last year when we played on um, the Bengals and Jamar Chase on on James Pierre before halftime. We were like, oh, we got we got them right here at halftime. We're gonna get a stop and throw a jump ball up and just a splash play happened. It kind of happened last year, kind of like. We're just like living in the same thing over and over every year. We have a big win. We beat a team that we're not supposed to beat. And last year, we beat the Bills last year. We were supposed to win that game. We won that game. We beat the Bengals um, this year. We won. We were supposed to win that game. And then the second game, you lose. <laughs> you, you, like, you lose in a similar way, similar fashion, which is kind of funny a little bit. But moving on to the third, the third, you know, third quarter. The, um, the good things that happened in the third quarter, the defense was playing consistent. Yeah, the defense kept us in this game the whole time like that. You can't blame the defense either. Like, but saying like, well, the defense had to stop right here. The defense kept us in. The offense had three and outs almost every time. The defense held us, held them to 17 points. And you, when you're looking at our team, you look at the offense, you're like, hmm, we had Najee Harris, who was a Pro Bowl last year. We had Denzel Johnson, who was a Pro Bowl. And Claypool, you know, is a guy who a lot of splash plays. George Pickens, got them in the second round. You see what he can, you see what he can do. We know, we, we know what he can do. Pat Fry moved and stuff. Like, oh, he scored eight touchdowns last year. You think that be like they should be able to score more than seventeen points, you know, to win the game. But that was not the case. But um, the, but one thing was that was good though. The defense, I said, was consistent, playing consistent. Um, what else? What else we had on there? Oh yeah, the refs finally start calling, start calling the um, false starts because in the first half, the left tackle for the Patriots was jumping uh, almost every play. Like he started going back, back pedaling every, every play, and even the one before the touchdown, no, that touchdown when Nelson Aguilar caught. He was jumping back too, but they didn't call that. But then the third quarter started calling more and calling the right side too. The right tackle, he was doing the same thing. They kept jumping early. And the holding penalties, they was calling them later in the game. But in the first half, they kind of left some out there a little bit. But the offense started sparking late in the third quarter. And the offense was the offense was looking pretty good. You know, I was like, okay, there we go. Because I want to see. Like, if it's not there from your primary receiver, you look, go through your reads, and then, ah. Kind of go fast like that. Cause you, you know, because the way our offensive style is, too, we got to do a lot of quick stuff, a lot of, like, fast stuff inside. Uh, well, most of the stuff be outside. Cause we, we never use the middle of the field. I don't know why they don't use the middle of the field. That kind of the style of offense is not use the middle. But you look at it like that. You look. You read, make your reads. Those take down Najee. You start throwing a check down to Najee's, and Najee start getting getting um big gains and start breaking tackles, start breaking plays. It's like I do. Put the ball in your, your playmaker hands. Find a way to get them the ball. I had Najee, the clay pulls, the Deontay's, the um, Pat Fry move. The pickings, let them get the ball, let them get the ball in their hands so they can make something happen. Cause you know Nazi can turn a three yard, 
Like how he did um too, like the stiff form and the hurdle. He can turn a three yard catch to like a ten to twelve yard game. Just throw the check down. But yeah, I know when to take the check downs, when not to. On third down, you get to get take down third down. Like you need to move the sticks and get to the sticks unless like unless it's like a third and three or something. But other than that, don't take the check down when it's like third on third and long. We try to move the sticks and get the first down. You gotta know how to like the sense of like awareness of like the game and the game flow and the play clock. I feel like Mr. Bisky and then like and both, even Mac Jones himself too. Mac Jones and Mr. Bisky, both of the quarterbacks, was not doing a good job at like assessing the the play clock and stuff like that. Like the, getting the delay of games because we have delayed games a couple of times on our side of the ball. Like that, they, they have bad clock management when it's out there. Like calling the play too long, trying to do too many audibles. I'm like just get down and snap the ball like that. But um yeah, the negatives uh, in the third quarter, um uh, we still wasn't getting pressure. We still wasn't getting pressure to the quarterback and the gunner. The gunner fumble. The gunner muff fumble. Gunner is an all pro punt returner, kick returner, whatever it's called. Special teamer. He's an all pro. So I, I, I thought he'd be the last person I see muff a punt like that. And like, it just like him and him. That's like the typical thing that always happens to um, inexperienced, you know, punt returners. Like you spy, like once time you spy once like that, you can't, you know, you can't really see. They drop back. You know, usually they drop back like that. He tried to like get it. And because he already had the defender in front of him. So like, I don't think he was going to go nowhere if he did catch it. So he should have just let it bounce back. And, and the way that it was coming, it might have bounced back to the end zone, and, um, you know, and probably been like a touchback. But he muffed that, and the defense um, was already tired. They've been playing probably playing more time possession than offense. They've been on the field longer than offense. I like thought the defense was tired, and then they scored. Then we hear a score. Now Cam Sutton did drop an interception. He had an interception dropped right right to him. Now I ain't, I ain't blaming the, that on him, but that interception happens, you know, the punt situation would never, no, that punt situation probably never happened because we would have been closer in, in a different position and like that. And like maybe with a score, got a field goal to something. We would have been field range for sure at that. But that drop, that drop on interception did come back to the hunt a little bit. But that muff punt was the, that was, that was real bad. That was very bad. Moving on to the, um, the next play we have, um, I mean, the next quarter. And in the fourth quarter, the positives and negatives. And um, we're going to go to the positives, of course, first. Um, the offense finally delivered a touchdown. You know, Fryer moved in the middle. That was like the the best. Well, that one drive we had in the um, well, actually it's the same drive. Yeah, that was that was like the best. That was the best drive we had the whole game, like that. And um, then the Jesse Johnson, the big catch he had. But the um negatives in that quarter, Mitch had Mitch um had Najee wide open, and Najee ran like a wheel route, and then Judon was on him. You know, Judon is a linebacker. But he's more but he's an edge rusher like that. He had Judon on him. And he beat Judon. And now if he threw that ball and delivered it right over the top, that's easy touchdown. That's easy touchdown. Right? And especially Najee Harris speed and stuff, he, that's easy touchdown or a big game like that. It could be an easy touchdown or a big game like that. But it would have been something positive. He threw the ball underneath. So Najee had to turn around and have to catch over his helmet like that. And he can get both hands around it like that. So I'm like, yeah, you got to step into the throw. He was throwing off the back foot too much. And it just didn't look good. Mr. Bisky only had 175 passing yards. Um, A lot of bad throws. Uh, off the back foot. I don't want to bash Mr. Biscuit or anything. I understand like what I'm seeing. I think it's just like the bad, the missed opportunity. Pickens was open multiple times. Um, we had Jesse Johnson open on some plays down the field. Now he was getting the, he was targeting Jesse Johnson. I think, but I wish he was targeting Claypool and Pickens because this matchup right here was been per like it was perfect for him because the, the cornerbacks was extra small. I like just like giving the ball, give him opportunity downfield to make a play, and he just wasn't doing that. And then we see um. Like how he just missed those throws. I like kept throwing off the back foot and I look comfortable out there and making bad decisions and like just looking lost like a deer in headlights. And you know, the fans, of course, are gonna start chanting. They start chanting Kenny like it's a wrestling arena or something like Kenny, Kenny, or Kenny all throughout the arena and they start booing and stuff like that. Now, this is the second game in a row. Because we won the first game. I know people are saying, well, it's the first game of the season like that, but we've seen the same thing. We didn't see any improvement. We've actually seen decline in this game with Mr. Bisky. So this the leash probably getting shorter and shorter. We drafted Kenny Pickett in the first round for a reason. If we, if we didn't think Kenny Pickett was going to be the guy, we would never draft him. We would have rolled Mr. Bisky on the two year deal and did like that. And like before the season started, I actually thought the Steelers, like before like the, we, we even signed Trubisky and before Big Ben retired, I thought the Steelers was going to, um, the plan at first, because the Big Ben had the retirement rumors going out throughout the um, whole season. But I thought the Steelers' plan was going to be like, okay, we bring Big Ben back for one more year, the last year at age 40, and then we draft Kenny Pickett so he can sit behind. The legendary Big Ben Roethlisberger and soak up how much information he can get, and then the following season when Big Ben do with father retire, we'll have Kenny Pickett, and he'd be like, "Oh, I learned this from Big Ben, learn that," and then he'd be ready and be ready to play. But it's still a different approach. Uh, they said the Big Ben retire, and then they did the um 
They signed Mr. Bisky. And I, when we had Mr. Bisky out there, had Mr. Bisky, had Marcus Mariota, then Winston. I was advocating, as you guys know, for James Winston and Marcus Mariota. I feel like Marcus Mariota, the leadership he, he possessed and his ability to run like that, I was advocating for those guys. But Mr. Bisky, but they all kind of the same boat. It's like, you don't know if they're going to be good or not. You know, kind of like, like they're kind of like taking like a, a chance on all of them. But we took Mr. Bisky, and Mr. Bisky, he um, you know, he he looked, he looked pretty solid, you know, in preseason. But we we seen that like him like missing throws in preseason, and we seen like how he was throwing off the back foot a lot with like he looked comfortable back there. Then we see Kenny Pickett, and he was stepping to the throws and like you know releasing and stepping to the throws, and not being worried about that. And then it's, and just taking it to the chin like that. But people were saying, well, Trubisky, well, Kenny Pickett is playing against the the backups. Then Kenny Pickett played against the starters, you know, that Jaguar game, and he del he delivered the only. We scored a touchdown at one drop at the uh, second half. He played against some of the starters like that, and then we see how he delivered out there. So I feel like I, I, I said I said before too. I said like um, Kenny Pickett uh, has a, little, a lot more confidence and a lot more spark, a lot more juice because you know like even if, even if he did get put out there, right? He have a um, rookie. I think his rookie year gonna be. I think it'd be good if he did get put out there. He have a good year, but I feel the same thing. His rookie year is like bad. He's still a, he's still a rookie. He's still a rookie. He'd be like, oh, we still we still know the time to improve like that. This ain't his. This ain't the final product. He's not like twenty eight years. No, twenty eight years old. Like this ain't, this ain't his like sixth season, seventh season. This is his first year. So we're like, okay, we know you want to improve and go you know, learn, learn, learn more like that. Cause Big Ben rookie year, you know, he went undefeated like that. But you know, he still he ain't like looked the best ever like that. But he still looked pretty good. Like okay, we know, we know it's stuff there to improve, improve. And then you seen Big Ben. I think by I forgot what year it was. I think about 2008 was his first Pro Bowl, I think. 2008 or 2009, through 30 touchdowns, I believe. Was it 32, 32 touchdowns, I think? Yeah. And he made his first Pro Bowl. I thought, like, there it go. I, Big Ben, he started getting into the groove like that. But Kenny Pickett, I don't know if, he gonna, if they're going to bring him in. Like, some, a lot of people were saying, like, around, like, week five, I said it'd be, like, the the, uh, the the point where they might think about considering a QB switch like that if it doesn't get better. Like that, I don't think he'll be back for next. I don't think Kenny Pickett gonna be in next game. I think Mr. Bisky still gonna be the guy because um he did turn the ball over today, but we still was only three no three no three points away from winning like that. So they are gonna lose it from that standpoint and gonna probably give him another chance like that. But the leash is getting shorter and shorter. So I think another another bad game like this might um start having the questions. My start questions might start popping up. I don't know. My channel probably answering questions right now, but people um asking them. Like is Kenny Pickett gonna start? You ever think about QB switch? But you know he's gonna he's gonna keep it neutral. He's not gonna say yes or no like that. So we're gonna see if Kenny Pickett will be the starting quarterback by week five or something, or will Mr. Bisky get it back on track and get back to what we're doing? Cause like we seen Glinson, we like okay, that's the miss we like right there when you see him got the pocket, he's mobility, and I like, step up and run or like get step up in the pocket and deliver some throw. We like okay, there you go. But like it's just like we don't see enough enough of that consistently for him to be like okay we feel comfortable in him being the guy for the rest of the season. But there's a lot of questions to be asked, a lot of things to be and questions to be answered as well. And yeah, I don't that's, that's all that's all I got for you guys really. If you like this video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out. Oh, and also leave in the comment section what you guys think about the game as well. But I'll see you guys on probably tomorrow for the um what went wrong day. Yep.